Jesus is the true gift, the only gift that can fill the heart. Christmas greetings of the Custos of the Holy Land, Father Francesco Patton. His first Christmas press conference as Apostolic Administrator. Also this Christmas, God is able to surprise us. We must be ready. The Christian community of Gaza gathered around the delegation of the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem to celebrate Christmas, a time of joy and sharing despite all the hardships. History and meaning of Bethlehem, discovering how in this village the Old Testament prophecies found fulfillment in the Messiah's provenance. The lighting of the tree at the new gate, the local markets, and a charity dinner for the needy and orphaned children. The old city is preparing for the Christmas festivities. In the psalm that St. Francis composed for the celebration of Christmas, he reminds us that the Most Holy Child has been given to us and has been born for us on the way and placed in a manger because he did not have a place in the inn. Every day in Bethlehem we contemplate the physical place on the way where Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. There, we daily venerate the manger where he was placed. The physical reality of this place reminds us of the fact that the Son of God chose to share our history and our life in a real manner. The mystery of the Incarnation is not a reality show in which common people, in front of a television camera, act by pretending to live real situations. Jesus came from a royal lineage, and yet he found himself being born on the way, because in a real way, he did not find a place of welcome or any hospitality. He found himself being born on the way as a son of immigrants, as we would say nowadays, more than as a descendant of a royal family. This fact and this choice, which we daily commemorate in Bethlehem, but which we live once more in the whole world, particularly during this intense period of Christmas, reminds us of the fact that the Son of God has taken our human condition very seriously. Jesus identifies himself with the condition in which he found himself on the way, not out of a personal choice, but out of necessity. He was born on the way because he was obliged to find work somewhere else. He was born on the way because he had to emigrate from a situation in which he was a victim of discrimination and which did not permit him to live in dignity in his own house. He was born on the way because an earthquake or floods have deprived him of his own home. He was born on the way because war uprooted him from his own country and made him become a refugee. These are the ways in which the Son of God, who was born in Bethlehem on the way, identified himself and still identifies himself, because there is no place for him where we normally live and find our place. This child, however, reminds us of the words of St. Francis, who was echoing the words of the Gospel and of the liturgy. He has been given to us, and he was born for us. We can also find ourselves deprived of everything along the wayside. But if we have received this gift, our life is already full of meaning. Jesus is the true gift we wait for. Jesus is the only gift that can fill our heart. Jesus is the gift that fills our life. Without this gift, all that we have will serve for our livelihood, but will not be useful to live in a full and authentic way. Jesus was born for us. Pronobis are the Latin words which make us grasp the reality that the entire life of that child was going to be a life given for us from which we received a great benefit, our salvation. The possibility to become, together with him, children of the same God the Father. The possibility to participate in the fullness of life and joy in which make up divine life. 
He was born for us on the way. He was given to us on the way. He became for us the way leading to life, to happiness, and to the fullness of love. Let us gaze upon the manger in the grotto of Bethlehem, and there we already see in perspective Golgotha and the cross, where we will truly understand the meaning of the expression of that child who was born for us. On behalf of the Franciscans of the Holy Land, and on my behalf, I wish you the joy to feel moved not only in front of the small boy in the crib, but also in front of each and every child of flesh and blood whose arms reach out to us and who asks us to be accepted. In that child, we can see how much the Son of God has become for us. He became small in a real way and not in a metaphorical sense. I wish all of you, and above all those who feel they are living on the way in a fragile and vulnerable condition, to feel that you fall under the maternal and vigilant gaze of the Virgin Mary and of the vigilant and caring presence of St. Joseph, who stands beside her. I wish all of you to come to know how to pass from sentiment to action in order to recognize in this present moment the Son of God who is still asking us to welcome him on the way and who still risks not to find a place among us and to have to find refuge somewhere else. Buon Natale a ciascuno, a ciascuna di voi, alle vostre famiglie e alle vostre comunità. We want to believe that even this year, even this Christmas, God is able to surprise us, but we have to be ready, open our eyes for the surprises of God. With these words, Monsignor Pierre Battista Pizabala, who was appointed Apostolic Administrator in late June, launched the Christmas press conference at the Latin Patriarchate. This has been a year full of difficulties and challenges, continued Monsignor Pizabala, surrounded by the patriarchal vicars, William Schmali and Bulos Marcuso, and the head of the pastoral care of migrants, David Neuhaus. Syria, Iraq, Egypt have experienced a wave of violence never seen before. The absence of the international community who helplessly watched the striking circumstances that caused hundreds of thousands of deaths, millions of displaced people and refugees makes this situation more dramatic. I hope that the international community supports the development and growth of this population instead of supporting wars and divisions. The Syrian and Iraqi people are not the only ones who have experienced pain and suffering. The attack on the Coptic Church in Egypt, the construction of the wall through the Kremazin Valley despite numerous appeals of the Church, the absolute stalling of the peace process between Israel and Palestine. The situation seems critical and yet exposing it is not enough, Monsignor Pizabala proceeded. We need to help find solutions and continue to build a mentality of peace beginning with education. Frustration and indignation are legitimate and understandable, but they do not lead to anything constructive. We must turn all this into something concrete, positive. We must also look at the good that has been done. Even within this atrocious war, there have been amazing and hope-inspiring signs of life, support and solidarity. The faith of many refugees, the leadership of Pope Francis' tireless pastor, the hospitality to workers and refugees, the rapprochement between the various Christian denominations in the Holy Land reinforced by the restoration works of the Holy Sepulchre and the Basilica of the Nativity are taking place. There are many reasons to be frustrated, scared and worried about the future, he concludes, but we believe as Christians that this child who was born in Bethlehem is our strength. When you wait for someone, every fiber of your being is also waiting. You will perceive the signal. However, if you are distracted, you will miss it. As a community, we must wait for the right, intimate sign. We should not rest. We should take our eyes off ourselves and start focusing on our neighbor. My hope is that the Lord gives us the strength to carry out our mission according to His will. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
an appointment which could not be missed by the small Christian community in the Gaza Strip, which in the last Advent Sunday celebrated its birth, one of the many small parishes of the Holy Land, perhaps the most isolated and suffering community, which we wanted to bring together with the Latin Patriarchate delegation who came for a time of sharing and joy. We came to Gaza to celebrate Christmas with the Christian community in this region of the Holy Land, but also to remember the Feast of the Holy Family. A day of celebration for young and old, scouts welcomed the delegation, a holy mass presided by the patriarchal vicar for Israel, Bishop Marcuso, who did not fail to show his support. The church prays for you, helps you, and loves you. And a representation of the nativity made by children, the child of Bethlehem is a source of peace and hope. Our message for Christmas is always the message of our Lord Jesus Christ, forgiveness, peace and joy for everyone, and also for the people of Gaza, because they have been oppressed for years and see no hope. Today we had this visit to Gaza. It is a nice day. It is of great moral support for us. At Christmas, everyone is here to participate with us with joy in the celebration in the church. Our message is one of peace and love among all the people who are here in Gaza. If there is progress, there is life, love, and cooperation. With these words, the patriarchal vicar wanted to emphasize the importance of the restoration and development of numerous works implemented in 2016. Our message is clear. Stay here. We are here and we want you to stay here because the Holy Family, during their flight from Bethlehem to Egypt, came through Gaza and we want the small Christian family what is left of it, the little flock of Gaza, to stay, because we do not want to lose the Christian presence. So we are here, and we want you to stay. Courageous and exhausted, but happy faces in the Gaza City community celebrated together once again another Christmas of hope despite everything. The Christmas message to this community and to the Gaza parish is you are in the heart of the church, you are not forgotten, we will never forget you. There's a small town of Judea now located in the West Bank, about 10 kilometers from Jerusalem, without great natural attractions. Although no significant historical events have taken place in this city, it changed the course of history. Bethlehem is part of humanity's path of salvation. Here, Jesus was born. Mary and Joseph had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem to be registered for the census. During that time, in fact, people were required to register to their own family hometown. Luke, in an effort to be more accurate, says that Joseph's family was from this region, even though at one point some families from Bethlehem and Jerusalem moved to Galilee to develop agriculture. It is possible that this was part of the socio-economic strategy of the time. In fact, the Gospel of Luke says that Joseph took part in the census of Quirinius, the governor of Syria, and therefore he had to travel to his hometown, which was Bethlehem. This researcher and professor of Bible and Judaism says that the Jewish families used to move from Galilee to Judea in caravans, generally during the period of important festivals that took place in Jerusalem. Easter, Pentecost, and Feast of Booths. In these times, they most certainly traveled in caravans because it was safer. Some rode animals and others walked alongside. Making a few stops during the journey, we estimate an average of 15 days of walking, which is the route from Nazareth to Jerusalem. We can imagine the journey that used to regularly be the Roman route down the Jordan Valley to Jericho. 
While they were in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to baby Jesus. A place seemingly small and of no importance, what was then so special about this town for the Son of God to be born right here? This is not a coincidence induced by the census. The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem is part of God's plan and is the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament. The sacred text announced that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem from the family of David. Jesus inherited the lineage of David from his adoptive father, Joseph. When David was born, there was already a model of unification of all the tribes, which would later be the model of unification of all peoples. So, as announced by the prophets Isaiah and Micah in chapters 7 and 5, the descendant of David, the promised Savior, would have to come from this small town. This has shed light on the entire theology, giving birth in the Jewish tradition to a messianic hope focused on Bethlehem. Like the prophets in previous generations, so the angels of the Lord announced the coming of the Messiah to the shepherds of Bethlehem. Do not be afraid. I bring you news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. The Christian quarter of the Holy City was ready for the festivities and gave its inhabitants and its tourists the first gifts. Saturday night for the fifth consecutive year, thousands of faithful attended the lighting of the Christmas tree at the new gate, officially kicking off the Christmas celebrations. We find hope when we light the tree because it is a symbol of life. It illumines our lives with the light of Jesus that comes to enlighten us in faith, hope and charity. Tonight is like a light in the darkness because for 11 months we have to face hardships. Security is uncertain. The economic situation is tough. This month is good to us and to the children as a Christian family. This year, the aim of the organizers, members of the association Seeds of Better Life, was also to relive the joy of Christmas. The scouts marched through the streets of the old city. Various artists exhibited their artwork and traders sold Christmas products. In between the alleys, one could run into a clown or a Santa Claus who made the children laugh. The children were in fact the protagonists of the following evening. The company for the development of the Christian Quarter in the old city of Jerusalem organized a charity dinner to more than 60 people, including orphans and needy. During the holidays, children need their parents. If they are gone, we remind them that we are here with them and for them. We give them what they need. We enjoy the festivities. We eat and drink together. We remind them that they are not forgotten and that we are here for them. It is a small neighborhood in the heart of the Holy Land, but its inhabitants reveal once again that the anticipation of Christmas does not stop at numbers or hardship, and that everyone's heart continues to desire a new blessing with the announcement of December 25th. We were invited here to get away and have fun with Santa Claus, the clowns and the games. I also like to see other people having a good time. Everyone should have fun. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. The mission of the Christian Media Center is to bring the message of the Holy Land, the land of the fifth gospel, to the world. 
broadcasts, reports, news, documentaries, the latest happenings in the church, and of the daily life of Christians in the Holy Land. You can help us in this mission, raising awareness and spreading the message of the Holy Land. Help us. Visit our website, 